Hi, it's Jay, and uh, today, as you can see, I'm really fucking tired, uh, but I have uh, some coffee here, and um, I'm going to basically film a process of wiring up a new pedal board. Now, normally, um, I kind of use the same pedals most of the time, and, and a lot of the time, I, depending on, on the gig, I use the, the drive that's from the amplifier. But this time, um, we're going off on tour uh, with my band, Distant Distance, um, and we aren't really sure what kind of amps or or backline we're going to be getting on this tour so um, I'm just hoping for the best and I'm going to take uh, you know the bare essentials that I need uh, on my pedal board so before we get started um, I'm gonna use a very very small board it's a pedal train Metro 16 I'll show you in a minute what it looks like and um, but before we get started uh, I've drawn up a kind of schematic of, of um, uh, of how my pedal board is going to kind of look. So, it looks something like this. You probably won't be able to see it so well. Um, you can see the writing on the back of the page, maybe? There we go. Put it there. Okay, so anyway, uh, what I've got going on is I've got my dry signal is going into uh, a tuner, and after the tuner, it's going to go into a compressor. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to put the compressor on there or not because. I'm quite a dynamic player, uh, and for this gig, like I normally use a comp like for clean sounds, like when I'm playing funk or something like that. Um, for this gig, uh, I'm gonna be using a, a lot of dynamics, a lot of um, the volume knob, the sweep down. So I might not really need the compressor, but sometimes it, it is kind of nice to have it. Um, you know, just to boost the signal a little bit, or you know, if I'm playing fast passages, just to kind of compress the signal a bit. Uh, so it makes my my picking sound even so I get to cheat a little bit so uh, next then I go into a phaser uh, which I use um, uh, on on this record on the record that we recorded there's, there's a lot of phasing going on so uh, I'm gonna use a phaser and then into a loop switch now the loop switch I have is running two loops uh, I've got a distortion uh, loop uh, so that consists of two drives um, normally it would be more, but because I'm, you know, trying to save real estate here, uh, I'm only going to take two out on the road with me this time. Uh, I normally have the exotic BB preamp on pretty much every board I I've had since like 2003 or something like that, or two no, not that long ago, let's think, 2006 I think? Uh, yeah, 2006. Uh, I've always had the BB preamp on my board, but this time to save space, I'm not going to be taking it, uh, which is kind of sad because I really love that pedal. And uh, you know, I can show it to you. It's it's been through a lot of tours. It's bruised to crap. Um, anyway, so I have one loop uh, which has distortions uh, or overdrives, and then I have another loop which is my wet effects, um, which generally consists of a delay or a delay and reverb. Um, so, uh, yeah, this time uh, I'm using a delay and a reverb because I, I want to have some ambient effects uh, for what we're playing. Um, also, uh, I got this great reverb pedal, which I'll show you later, uh, by this uh, kind of boutique uh, Italian company. And it's got built-in bit crusher, which is absolutely insane, uh, which I want to want to use for, for, for some of the improvisation and, and stuff on this tour. So, anyway, um, I've also the 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 wet effects uh, I'm gonna rig them into a one loop pedal uh, which uh, I'm gonna have off on the side so if I get an amplifier that has an effects loop when we're on tour uh, I can just uh, take a couple of cables out from this uh, loop and switch it switch it into the effects loop uh, so that um, I get a cleaner signal um, so not everything is going into the front of the amp I mean it's not a, too much of a problem with everything going in front of amp for, for what we do uh, as long as I have the distortion before or the wet effects but it's kind of nice just to just to have a cleaner signal uh, if the option is available and you know obviously if uh, when I'm going to be using this pedal board in the future it's it's going to be nice to have that option also um, with the, the wet effects going out to the loop now um, you know uh, in the future, the, the kind of setup might change, but for this tour anyway, uh, it's gonna look something like this. So, first of all, uh, let's measure it all out and see if everything kind of fits on the board and, and kind of work out how, how I'm gonna make it fit on the board. Um, and then uh, we'll get to wiring everything up. 
Alright, okay, see you in a second. Okay, so when I'm done, it's roughly gonna look like this on my pedal board. Um, just thinking about real estate, you know, I really, really, really want to bring my Strymon Dig. I love that pedal so much, and um, the album that I recorded with Distant Distance, uh, I used only that delay pedal. And um, yeah, I really want to bring it, but I don't know if I'm gonna have space for it. Um, because it's also going to need its own port on the on the power because it, it draws a, a lot higher power than the other pedals. Um, but we'll see. I'll see if I can rig it up. If it doesn't work, um, you know, if I can't get it to rig up, uh, if I run out of space on the board, then uh, I'll, I'll exchange it for uh, a TC flashback delay instead. Um, you know, n still a good sounding pedal, but you know, I just really, really love the sound of the dig. I mean, uh, since I got it, it's just... To in total love with it. So uh, here we go. Uh, uh, pedal wise, I've got a polytune um, going into my Wampler Ego compressor, which I'm still not sure if I'm gonna rig up either. Uh, going into a Phase 95 uh, pedal by MXR, uh, which is great because this has got um, you know both the 45, 90 circuits and uh, you can switch it between script and, and the regular, uh, which is great because you, you can get all those lovely kind of wet, drippy ambient tones and you know, the more kind of swishing uh, Van Halen style stuff. Um, then that's going into my loop pedal here. I have a custom built uh, loop pedal from uh, We Lush FX. It's called Super Looper. And what I have here is I have, you can have loop A or B or loop A and B together and then uh, an overall kind of bypass switch uh, so you can bypass both loops uh, and go just get your dry signal um, and then here to the side I've got a uh, one control one loop um, and basically what's gonna happen is this is gonna take um, I'm gonna connect my my wet circuit so that's the delay and reverb here uh, into this pedal and then if we have an effects loop I'll take a line out you can see here it says send and return. I'll take the, the send and return out to the amplifier and then I can switch in the, the loop um, so it goes to the effects loop instead of um, direct into the amplifier. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the first line and then uh, here you can see I got my distortion, I got my Wampler Tumnus pedal uh, which is absolutely great overdrive. On my own album uh, I use this on everything. I mean um, you know, a lot of like the, the chugging seven string tones are, are just using this, you know, um, quite light overdrive, uh, not too heavy, but you know, just it just sounds really, really nice. I love the sound of it. And then I'm going into the SL Drive by Exotic. Um, as I said before, I, I really like the BB preamp. Uh, you can see my BB preamp here. It's, uh, yeah, it's been through a few wars, um, you know, been on, on tour for quite a few times. Um, but uh, I won't be using this this time, um, you know, but uh, the SL Drive, you know, it's a different sounding monster altogether, but uh, it's, you know, quite versatile and, um, you know, stacking those two together will, will, you know, produce some really, really good results. All right, so that's um, the dig pedal, uh, which I'm still not sure if I have space for, uh, but we'll see when I wire everything up. And then I have my beautiful armor pedal here uh, from AC Noises. Now, these guys are like a, a very kind of new company. Um, I don't think they've been around that long, but basically the story behind this pedal is I was um, on my own album. I have a track called Breathe In, Breathe Out. And um, uh, I was, you know, planning on playing some of the stuff live and I wanted to create the uh, an effect that I used um, you know when recording in the studio uh, which was basically uh, bit crushing the signal and, and adding a, an ambient effect to it. Now this does it slightly differently um, it's a reverb uh, with an oscillator and uh, it bit crushes the reverb uh, afterward uh, so I thought when I found this pedal I was like uh, I need to get this one because it does the bit crusher this the sound of the bit crusher is a lot clean compared to other ones. Normally when you, you get the bit crusher it just sounds like a, a really dirty fuzz. Um, well ones that I've tried by other brands anyway but this one is you know did exactly the sound that I needed it to do and uh, it, it's fun <laughs> to use the bit crusher when playing live as well. 
you know, it's very kind of sensitive to dynamics. So the more you pick harder, the the yeah, uh, the harder you pick, uh, the the more more crushing your sound gets and more distorted it gets. Uh, right then, so that is the pedals that I'm going to be using. Now let's see if I can rig it all up. Okay, so here we have my uh, pedal train uh, Metro 16. <laughs> it's funny because um, I used to have like the biggest pedal train, uh, you know, that they make. Absolutely huge. It's like the size of a keyboard, and I used to cart it everywhere around London with me on the on the tube, with like a dozen effects, uh, you know for the specific sounds, but it's so great now that, you know, companies are making these like mini, you know, the mini chassis here, uh, because you get so much great sound from such a, a tiny little pellet, you know, it takes up next to no real estate whatsoever. So it, it's quite doable to take one of these small, tiny little pedal boards with you. Um, besides, also I'm gonna be flying with this. Um, we're not bussing it this time, so, um, because we're flying, I need to have something that fits in my suitcase, uh, you know, that's not going to get me in too much trouble, basically. Um, so anyway, uh, what I have here, under here, I have it rigged up with my power supply, I have a, it's kind of upside down now, but you, you can see I have a, a Chokes um, DC5 power supply. Um, I've got a couple of wires, some, yeah, some of these, um, um, how do you say it? Um, it you know, some of these channels here uh, are gonna kind of run more than one uh, one pedal um, but I need to have a separate one for my my looper pedal so it's completely clean and um, the one control pedal I don't think I'm actually gonna wire up because uh, I'm not gonna be using it all the time uh, only when uh, the opportunity arises I think I'm just gonna you know um, have it unwired and just use it um, unpowered besides the power it only um, it only powers the LED and I don't really need that clicked in. Um, you know, you can hear the difference between the effects loop and, and straight in front of the amp. Okay, so that's that. Um, right then, let's uh, get taping up some stuff and see if we can wire wire this all together. Uh, the cables that I'm using uh, for my pedal board, uh, which I came across before. Uh, let me just go get them. Um, a mess there. Yeah, um, I used these on the, on the pedal board before and absolutely loved them. Um, let's see if we can focus there. These are EBS uh, flats. Um, you can see here that the this side is completely flat, uh, which makes it a lot easier when connecting up pedals. You save yourself quite a few inches uh, uh, of space, or a few centimeters of space between each pedal uh, because this is completely flat. Um, and they work really, really well. Uh, I haven't had any problems with these. Uh, before I had, God, uh, on my last pedal board, my last big pedal board, I had so many different um, different patch cables. And uh, I was thinking about going the route of, you know, getting the solderless kits and ma making your own. And then I came across these ones, and it was just like, nah, I don't need them. These ones are so reliable, such, such good patch cables, and they're not too expensive either. And they also do ones with, um, with gold plugs, uh, which I haven't tested out, but uh, maybe one day I will. Anyway, uh, that's enough nerding out on <laughs> cables. So these ones by EBS, you should probably be able to get them in, in most of your local uh, um, music shops. I got this these here in my local shop in Uppsala. Um, right, so uh, let's get wiring. Okay, everything is uh, wired up now as tidily as I possibly could. I probably should get some cable ties and just fix some things down here. Um, but the thing is, as soon as I get back off this tour, uh, I'm probably going to end up ripping this apart for something else. So um, uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, let's plug it in and give it a test, make sure that everything works, including this uh, out to the effects loop uh, on my amp. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll give it a go. Bye. Okay, so uh, pedal board is all wired up now. I hit a snag with um, this one loop pedal. Um, actually, I think I bought the wrong 
pedal for the function that I needed. Uh, what I really need is a kind of splitter, uh, something that will basically send uh, the same signal to one loop, but also send it to the effects loop. So I guess uh, this time around I'm going on tour, um, we're just going to go direct into the amplifier. Um, not much of a problem because, you know, I'm guessing 70-80% of the time, uh, most of the amps that I'm we're gonna be playing through aren't gonna have an effects loop anyway uh, but it's an option that you know I want to set up uh, for later later on down the line uh, of you know for, for when, I'm, when I'm using my own gear as well playing live it's kind of nice to be able to switch between the effects loop and uh, front uh, of, of the amp so anyway um, what I'll do is I'll take the camera down and give you uh, you know quick listen to some sounds I'm not using a microphone here so what you're hearing is just like the sound from the room so it's probably not gonna be the best sound um, you know I should probably do a you know a proper uh, run through uh, you know mic'd up and everything uh, another time but anyway uh, what I have here is I have my tuner pedal uh, so guitar direct into tuner going into compressor. Uh, this I um, don't have on all the time. I generally use it like if I'm playing something fast, um, you know, where I need that extra bit of compression uh, to tighten up the sound a little bit. Um, from there I'm going into phase 95. Um, I like to, you know, uh, use this before the distortion um, and, you know, so, so it's kind of nice to have this in the, you know, uh, the dry signal going through this before hitting the distortion channel or the uh, wet effects channel. And then from there, we're going into this uh, lovely little box I had built by We Lush Effects. It's basically um, an AB uh, looper. Um, so you can have loop A or loop B or both on at the same time. Um, and then I have... Uh, an overall bypass switch as well. Now, thing is that I don't really use um, a dry clean sound. Very, very rarely I use a dry clean sound. Uh, when I was playing my band Mahavira, there was like one track I used a dry clean sound, but everything else was just wet. Um, but for this gig uh, with Distant Distance, um, I don't really use the clean that much, but when I do, it's always affected with something. Um, okay, so. Uh, let's hear some sounds. So basically, uh, I'm going into the distortion. Uh, I'll give you the dry signal first. So here's my dry signal. And then uh, I can add the phase 95 to that. One. Right now I have this set on phase 45 with script. Um, And then you can hear um, just a drive sound. So that's the one for Tomness, and then I have a SL drive on here as well. I can kick in. Oh, whoopsie daisy. Um, so I generally have this on a little bit of a heavier sound. Um, and that I use for both rhythm and lead stuff. And if I want like real overkill, I can add the tumblers to that as well. Right, so from there, um, I have my uh, B channel, which has got all the wet effects on here. So I've got the dig um, delay, just listen to that by itself.
myself, and then uh, I can. I've got reverb here as well. Um, the arm of Macy knows this. And I can add oscillation to that if I want it to sound a bit bigger. Now, um, what I can do, because um, I have the two loops, is I can have the, a switch between A uh, and B. So um, I can go from heavily distorted sound. To a nice, clean sound with wet effects on it. But only having to press on one pedal instead of having to press on multiple pedals. Um, and then I can also add the wet signal. The A channel, so now I can have I can have A and A, a loops A and B together. Um, can I overall do an overall bypass on there. Um, I can also switch back to my clean sound from there as well, uh, just by you know uh, tapping. with the armor pedal is uh, it's got a built-in bit crusher so um, let's just take some effects off here uh, what I can do is I can switch this and um, it bit crushes the signal <laughs> Just this to make it like put more effect in there. No, maybe just play it clean without the distortion on there. Um. The cool thing is because I have it after the delay. Um, it'll affect the delay repeats if I put some extra repeats in here. You can hear the note. Uh, 
Right then, there you have my uh, pedal board all ready for going on tour. All right, hope to see you out on the road. Uh, we'll be hitting uh, Budapest on the 13th of November, and then we're off to Latvia for three dates there, 15th, 16th, 17th, and then uh, Uppsala, Sweden on the 23rd. Right, bye now.